Cause I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Across the deserts, bear man. I've breathed the mountain air, man. I've traveled, I've had my chair, man. I've been everywhere. Been to Talamo, Seymour, Lisbon, Lulabar, Nambo, Mruchito, Kilmore, Rillabar, Bertha, Lemmerville, Wallaville, Connavano, Connavine, Strathrine, Prosper, Nella, Dalla, Dalla, Ginger, Nella, Quinn, Mackdilla, Wallaville, Bogaville, Cumberilla, I'm a killer. I've been everywhere, man. Unsurprisingly, Robert. We are doing regional roundup at this time of the day. We do that every week, but today we're going to Tawonga. You yeah. may be surprised. I've, to know. Uh, I've had I've had the opportunity to prep our guest Neil with question number one. So we we love that. I will leave that to you then to do. Okay. okay. Hello, Kitty Vigo. By the way, up there in Tawonga. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. You're in beautiful Geelong. Beautiful Geelong. Now, yeah. now, Kitty, you've had about three or four minutes to prepare. Where the bloody hell is Tawonga? Well, it's a gorgeous little town in possibly one of the most beautiful valleys in Victoria called the Kiwa Valley. Ah, uh, you've, you've won me already. Kiwa Valley, yes, and the Kiwa Valley is named after the Kiwa River, and that evidently means sweet water. And indeed, at the very downriver, further along, there's a little town called Kiwa, which is on the way to, or way from, Wodonga. So to get to Tawonga, you drive down the Kiwa Valley Highway, and then you pass through it. It's a little town. Um, and then further five kilometres down the road is Tawonga South. And then one and a half kilometres beyond that is Mount Beauty. So I always think of the towns as accommodation because they sort of make up one community. Between them, they, there's about 2,500 people. There's a lot of difference across mm. Victoria, um, and all of it is beautiful, but I, I can, I would I'll put my hand over my heart, and I, I don't think there's anything more beautiful than the Kiowa Valley. It is gorgeous, and of course it's sort of dominated by the Bogong, Mount Bogong, which is the tallest mountain in Victoria, and looks like a proper mountain. <laughs> and uh, where else have I... Oh, yeah, so if you're a king skier, as I am, you go through these three towns um, from Bright or from Wodonga, that area, and then you um, go to Falls Creek and ski. And it's a poet's delight, isn't it? Because you've got Wodonga and Tawonga. You could actually write a poem about the region and not have to worry about, you know, rhyming. Mm. That's, that's right. And they're all Indigenous names, uh, Dudaroa names. So the local fans here were the Dudaroa and the Dudaroa. You wouldn't have the problem that Brian Cadd had trying to write a song about Gimpy. Mm. <laughs> Wimpy? <laughs> well, Wimpy, we went with Skimpy, interestingly <laughs> enough, uh, when we were talking to Caddy that time. <laughs> yeah, Wodonga and Tawonga, there you go. So uh, I would think that uh, there would be a tour bit of tourism going on in your neck of the woods, at predict pre uh, predominantly between, say, May and September. Well, no, all well, year, really, because what attracts people to coming to live here is the outdoor activities. So there's bushwalking, mountain biking, well, there's a very good mountain biking track here now in Mount Beauty. Skiing, of course. Um, you go through Mount Beauty to go up to the Bogong High Plains, which are absolutely gorgeous walking areas. So, yes, I'd say 12 months. Okay. And in, like a lot of regional areas, you have to sort of begin to think about attracting tourism 12 months of the year. But it is one of the, those are the sort of reasons that a lot of people retire here. So agriculturally, it's still uh, a little more traditional sheep, cattle, rather than okay. lots of cropping? <laughs> well, one of the things that makes me laugh about living in a small town like that, one thing is that people always say, oh, it's so classless. But in fact, when you live here, and you begin to realise that people, the people in Tawonga sort of look down at the people in Mount Beauty because Mount Beauty was developed as, as an SEC town at the time when they were building the hydroelectric scheme, the Kiwa Valley, the Kiwa hydroelectric scheme in the 40s. Tawonga, 6K away, is largely a, a farming town, so mostly and traditionally dairy, but now a lot of people are selling up the dairy farms and moving more just into cattle growing, and of course, at other times they've grown tea. Um, there was also another uh, somewhat uh, dangerous drug that was grown around there. I think they called it tobacco, I think they called it in that part of the world, didn't they? Oh, yeah, oh, well, yeah well, they were converted into healthy black, uh, black uh, not blackberry, black, blackberry farms, yeah. Okay. Blackberry, blackcurrant, or one of those, so blueberry farms. Yeah, and you can't smoke blueberries, i found. <laughs> no, no that, that had a big impact on this area when they decided to close down the tobacco growing. I should just play this momentarily. Oh, it's not doing it. I'll try it again, this time it. with the volume up. Let's do it again. 
Medical authorities warn that smoking is a health hazard. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we have to say that now on the radio <laughs> from 1972. The, the incidence of smoking is increasing yet. Yes. Yeah, well, sadly, um, we need to do something about that. But uh, powers out of control might have more control than we have, sadly. Anyway, we'll we'll leave that to smarter people than us. Well, um, no, I've, I've, I've never been a smoker. Um, this week, I uh, had the privilege, and we'll be hearing more about it, uh, the, the gentleman sitting in the studio beside me. We went up to Henty State at a little place, and we were reminded again of the importance of community in, uh, in regional Australia. And I sense maybe that your little valley and your little town might uh, be very much uh, relying on that community spirit to stay alive and well? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and sort of as far as bushfires become more prevalent, the community becomes, I think, a little bit tighter too. People will realise that they may have to rely on each other to help each other out at times of crisis. And of course, when there was COVID, people had to rely on... It. We didn't have those five kilometre limits for travel, but, of course, you were largely confined to the valley, so I think community interaction became important. I wouldn't say name names or even suggest that I would do this, but there were a number of slightly dodgy dinner parties at sections <laughs> A, B or C. Oh, of course you wouldn't. I mean, that would have been against the law, wouldn't it? <laughs> slightly dodgy dinner parties. Yeah. Been to a few of them in my time. Yeah, but the li- it's slightly dodgy in your case <laughs> is slightly different to this logic, like, I suspect. <laughs> so... No, I think- I turned 70 during COVID and one friend said, oh, you've got to have a party. And I said, I don't want a party. It's enough, just another day. Who cares? It was in 2022. No, whenever it was. Anyway, 2020. And but she said, I'll have a party at my house. And then she sang, rang and said, oh, no, we can't, we can't. People see the cars. And then a friend of mine who lives on a farm said, oh, I'll have a party at my place. And I, they said, oh, you can't, you can't. People will see you know, the car, so I ended up having it in my <laughs> for, for a group of you and your bubble friend, no doubt, that's all. <laughs> there wouldn't have been anybody else there, I would have thought. So would would Bright be kind of considered the capital of your part of the world? Is that the, the big town? Sorry, Bright, yes it is. Um, I live in Alpine Shire, and um, some people um, refer to Alpine Shire as Al- Bright Shire, but anyway, and we're separated. The Bright is in the Ovens Valley. Mm-hmm. And to get to Mount Beauty, you have to cross what I rudely refer to as, or often referred to, sarcastically referred to as the Himalayas. <laughs> because often people don't want, from the council don't want to, or the Shire don't want to drive over here. I say it's not like crossing the Himalayas. <laughs> 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 and I had one absurd interaction with a person there who said I had to meet with them. And they we were discussing whether they would come here or I would go there. And this person said, oh, it'd be much easier for you to come here. And I said, why is that? And she said, well, you've got a short climb and then a long rundown. And then, and I said, oh, yeah, whereas she had a long climb and a short rundown. I said, but if that's a return trip. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my family are well known for telling me that getting from Geelong to Melbourne is a lot quicker than getting from Melbourne to Geelong. It's a lot shorter. <laughs> 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 Which is bizarre. Uh, Kitty, um, th- sorry, go. You were going to say something? No, I wasn't. Okay. Um, thanks for joining us and telling us about Tawonga. I've got a funny feeling you, you, you're speaking of dodgy. Um, you may see a dodgy looking bloke called Rob in your part of the world soon because he sounds like he's converted uh, into coming up and saying g'day. It's but a pretty part of the world. It's it is beautiful. a pretty part of the world, isn't it? Got Are any you- free camping up there um, in your neck of the woods? There is certainly in the Buckland Valley, which is part of Alpine Shire, they've sort of, up, if you've got the Buckland High uh, Road, it's beautiful up there too. It's, it straddles or runs past um, Mount Buffalo. And it has about 700 free camping spaces. Now you're talking. Now we got him excited. Not only is it pretty, it doesn't cost him anything. Yeah. That's what he likes. Uh, well, yeah, but a lot of deer hunters and doggers go up there, people who shoot animals. Ooh, don't like. Don't want to. Don't want to be attached to them. Yeah, no, no. Rob do, doesn't do that. I've seen him try and hit a cricket ball. He's got no chance hitting a deer. <laughs> uh, Kitty, thanks for joining us. I'm looking forward to our chat on the Regional 250 podcast at some stage, you and I. But um, we will get that organised once Mr. Telstra helps me out. Thanks for being part of Regional Roundup. Well, thank you for inviting me. Thanks, Kitty. Best wishes. Chat soon. See ya. Yeah.